What's going on, guys? It's your boy Woodsy, out coach of the West Virginia Knockdowns with my Week 7 match for QDL this week. Uh, we are playing my boy Jer, who is actually just fresh taken over another team uh, as a midseason replacement coach. I believe this is actually his first game of the season. Uh, he did mix up his own team a little bit to have uh, some of the mods that he likes, but uh, he put together a, a really good team with his uh, free agent moves as he is taking over the team here with... Uh, Two separate very good cores in Dragapult, Corviknight, Aromatease, as well as having Arcanine, Gastrodon, Roserade. Uh, both of those trios are very good defensive cores on their own right, so putting them together, you know, it's a tough team to do damage to. Uh, throw something in like a Necrozma who could do just about whatever it wants and be a very scary sweeper or breaker or even a defensive mon, um, I think he has a very good threatening team. Uh, and other things that he has include more Pico, who could be a good, like, fast uh, rapid spin option, as well as uh, just spamming, like, Choice Banded Aura Wheels or something like that, getting the speed boosts. It is a uh, tough move to switch into, given that the, uh, the type of the move changes every turn, and then Ball Beat as a support mon. Um, so, going into my game plan here, I think Dragapult being one of the best mons in Draft League, uh, you have to hard prepare for it, which is why I'm bringing especially Defensive Bulu, even uh, if he does bring like a physical Dragon Dance set. Uh, just max HP is enough to guarantee to live an Adamant Life Orb Steel Wing from full HP. So, uh, I did opt to go with the specially Defensive set which will be able to tank hits from really any version of Dragon Pult. The only thing that would be scary for Bulu is firing off like a Specs Fire Blast or something, which is very possible, but I do have a lot of fire resist and even an immunity on my team, so I have some counterplay involved there. Player off, of course, to be hitting that Dragapult, and then High Horsepower to be hitting his Arcanine, who could be a good switch in. Leech Seed just has a good middle ground play to hit anything, because uh, even with player of high horsepower, I can't really be touching Corviknight or anything like that, and then Synthesis just to be keeping myself healthy. Uh, moving past that, we have Choice Specs Rotom. Uh, the main objective with Specs Rotom here is to be spamming Shadow Ball against his team. The only resist that he has is Morpico, who is extremely frail. I think it has like base 50s in HP and special defense, so it's not a very good resist. Um, th that being said, there are some mons on his team that could still eat Shadow Balls just naturally, like Astrodon and Aromatease, but uh, if I get a little bit of chip on those two mons, I could see Rotom doing big holes in his team. It uh, also is running Toxic to be able to hit something like the Gastrodon and uh, chip it down on its own throughout the game. Uh, Rotom is a very good pivot into Corviknight, because it just naturally walls any attack that the Corviknight wants to go for, with the exception of if he's like a power trip set, which is possible, but I, I wouldn't expect it. But uh, of course, we are running the electric coverage in Thunderbolt to be able to deal with Corviknight, because it is one of my better options to be it. And then Ball Switch just as a good pivot move if I am uncertain of a play. Uh, 56 defense EVs, I think, are enough to guaranteed live an attack from Arcanine if I wanted to, and I didn't really think that the extra 52 special attack was going to be coming all that much in handy. Uh, moving past that, we have four attacks, max HP Heathran. Uh, I think this is a mon that can guarantee two-shot his entire team if I get uh, moves correct. Uh, having max HP, I could pretty much tank a hit from just about anything, maybe with the exception of like a uh, an Earth Power from Gastrodon or like a, an Earthquake from the Crosmo or something like that. Uh, I think those would be like the only things I would really have to be a little bit careful of, but uh, generally speaking, this is something that could just tank a hit and do a bunch of damage to his team. Uh, we're running the tech power of Solar Beam to be able to hit the Gastrodon and past that, just Lava Plume, Flash Cannon, Earth Power is just good coverage for about anything. Uh, again, another pretty good Corviknight check. Corviknight can be running Body Press, so I have to be a little bit careful about going hard into Heatran, but Lava Plume is going to be doing a lot of damage to that. It's a good Aromatease check, which I do... I was expecting Aromatease just because I had stuff like Haxorus that could be uh, pretty threatening, as well as like Greninja and Gallade uh, that Aromatease could be a very good wall against, so I was expecting it, which is why I'm bringing Flash Cannon for it, and so on. Uh, going past that, we have Wise Glasses Greninja. Wise Glasses just to be able to boost our attack a little bit without really having any... Uh, negative effects like I was thinking about running Life Orb, but I didn't really want to be taking the recoil damage. 
I was thinking about running black glasses, but I did want some extra power on my hydro pumps as well because, uh, generally speaking, Dark Pulse is going to be the spammable move because his only resists are Aromatis and Morpico, which again doesn't really count as a resist. So, uh, if I could break through that Aromatis with Hydro Pumps, which is, if he's physically defensive, I do believe Hydro Pump 2 hit KOs it. Uh, but I think that was with the Wise Glasses, maybe that's why I went along with that. But, uh, we're also running Shadow Sneak, which is why we're running Mild Nature, so that we're not weakening our Shadow Sneaks, because, uh, Shadow Sneak is a very good option for stuff like Set Up Necrozma and, uh, Dragapult, whereas I, Water Shuriken wouldn't be doing as much damage to Dragapult. So we are running that, and then lastly we have Spikes. Uh, I think Gastrodon is an easy switch in for him on my Greninja, so uh, being able to set up a Spikes on the switch is, could be nice, because I think Spikes hit pretty much everything on his team with the exception of Corviknight. So uh, I think uh, long term those are something that could be really helpful in this game. Moving past that we have Crobat, which is like our wall breaker for the week. Running uh, Brave Bird Super Fang Taunt, which is one of my favorites. That's the run of Crobat this season. Uh, something that could just tank hits from mons that don't necessarily have a lot of raw offensive power, like Aromathies, Gastrodon, Corviknight, etc., and then be able to super fang taunt them down. Brave Bird is also a very spammable move in general, so I could uh, use that to threaten some of his offensive threats, because that's going to be doing a lot of big damage, especially with my adamant nature there. Uh, I don't really have to be running a lot of speed on my Crobat, because Dragapult's really the only fast Mon on his team. I think the next fastest Mon is Morpico, who is sub-100 speed, so I do not have to run a lot of speed on my Crobat to outspeed that. So uh, we have that option of running a lot of HP. And then finally, I didn't really have a, uh, a good 6th Mon with the a good matchup I thought so I kind of just threw Swampert on there maybe to help with the Arcanine and Morpico which is why we're running Rindo Berry so that I could eat the potential seed bomb for Morpico uh, but I thought really generally speaking this was just gonna be my rocker for the week and it wasn't really gonna be getting a lot done uh, worst case scenario I could like yawn spam and four switches and stuff and high horsepower plus liquidation does hit his team pretty well. I don't think he has a resist on his team that resists both of those. So, uh, you know, it's something that could uh, potentially do a little bit. But I, as Swampert was just kind of a throw on at the end there because I couldn't really find a sixth Mon that had a good matchup this week. Uh, so, moving into his team here. He did bring a lot of just uh, his straight up better Mons. Uh, I did expect Aromatis to be here, which I didn't see that. That was about the only surprise. I thought maybe Aromatis over Morpico just because I do have Tapu Bulu to shut down the Morpico, but it is pretty good against me if he does get through the Tapu Bulu, so uh, I guess it's not all that big of a surprise. Uh, I decided to just go ahead and lead with my Heatran here because, uh, like I said, it could take hits from a lot of the stuff on his team and do big damage in return, as he does lead the Morpico. I figure this thing's not really going to be doing that much damage to me, but he does reveal to be Stomping Tantrum, which I didn't expect, so uh, good on him. He does get big damage on my Heatran, but I am able to KO with an Earth Power. The crit did not matter. That is a Morpico, but uh, I think that's a trade-off that he will take uh, his Morpico from my Heatran. As he goes in the Revenge Kill Me with uh, Necrozma, I so very nearly went hard, <laughs> rode him on that turn, but... I, I eventually chickened out just because I thought a healthy Rotom was better than a, a no-speed Heatran that had like 20% health. So uh, I, I opted to not take the risk, even though it ended up with it being the good play there. Uh, I'm going to fire Shex Spec Shadow Ball, which is going to do huge damage, but he does set up the Dragon Dance. Uh, my Rotom set is very frail, so it is just going to easily go down to Photon Geyser here. And I'm in a sticky situation here because I don't have anything that can outspeed this Necrozma, or, and uh, it's not in rage of a Shadow Sneak and Micro Ninja, so I do have to go into Swampert here, who's just like my general Fizz Death Pokemon that could eat a hit. Uh, I do Liquidate, but he does reveal to be Moonlight, which is kind of problematic for me, because I'm not going to be doing enough damage to him, so I am just going to have to put Yawn status on him, so I could put him to sleep and to get in my Greninja or something like that to be able to get through this thing. As I set up a Stealth Rocks, because I know I'm going to be able to eat the Photon Geyser pretty well. But he reveals to be Lumberry, which is really bad for me, because now I'm going to have to put on a second Taunt. Luckily, I do not get two hit KO'd by a plus one Photon Geyser, so I can just get another one off as he does Ops to go for another Dragon Dance that this next Photon Geyser will kill. Uh, which he does do that. And uh, I'm already down three Mons, mostly all to this Necrozma. 
So, uh, Dragon Dance of Cosmo is something I was not very well prepared for, obviously, because it poked a huge hole in my team early here as I go into Greninja and fire off a big Dark Pulse. Uh, I Shadow Sneak this turn because it was a roll to KO, and uh, there was always the potential that he would wake up on this turn. Uh, he didn't wake up, luckily, because if he did, oh, I probably would have just lost right here. But uh, I, I do not get the roll of Shadow Sneak to KO. I do think it, I needed a high roll to be able to kill, so it's not like it was uh, hacks or anything like that. But I do get the uh, the extra turn of sleep there, so uh, I'm not. I could just fire off another Shadow Sneak, which I'm kind of forced to do because I don't want this thing to be waking up as he does go into Gastrodon. I could just go into Crowback because he's not really going to be able to do anything to me as he uh, just close off to click Protect, maybe to scout what I was going to do, maybe scout for a Toxic or something like that. But uh, I'm just going to fire off a Super Fang, knowing that it's going to be doing 50% to anything he wants to go into here. As he fires off a Scald, and luckily I do not get burned. Uh, and he is now in range of a Brave Bird. That critical hit did not matter because he was uh, a specially defensive set, which I found out after the game. Which I kind of expected them to be specially defensive, which is why I opted to go for the Brave Bird. So that was a nice kill for me. As he goes into his Dragapult, I'm just going to go into my Thapabulu here, which is my designated check for this Pult. As he reveals to be modest specs, that is uh, a lot of damage for the situation there. So knowing that he has modest choice specs, uh, I am going to be able to eat Shadow Balls, but I have to be a little bit wary of a uh, fire move or something like that in the future. Um, I'd figure, I predict that he was going to go into Arcanine here on my Tapu Bulu, so I make the double in the Greninja because uh, I really needed to make plays because I'm down at this point. So I needed to get some offensive pressure onto him. I get the play right. So he is forced to sack his Necrozma to rocks here as I click Hydro Pump, and he is able to get his Dragapult in here. Now I know he's probably not going to go for Draco here because I revealed that my Tapu Bulu was uh, my switch in here. So uh, I knowing that I'm going to live anything that isn't a Draco Meteor, I decide to stay in as he does U-turn and get a lot of damage off. But because of that, I am able to click Dark Pulse here and uh, pick up another KO and really get myself back into this game. So, uh, Dark Pulse is not going to be a hit, two hit KOing this quarter of the night, but because he is physically defensive, it is going to put him in range of a Hydro Pump, which I do fortunately land, and uh, we are going to take out the Corviknight. So, he is going to go back into Dragapult here to revenge kill me, and I am going to opt to go into Crobat, because I thought it was my least useful member here. So, uh, I was really just going into it to sack it, but he does U-turn, expecting me to go into Tapu Bulu again. Um... This is pretty good for me because I am running the inner focus to not be able to be intimidated for Arcanine, so I could just fire off a free Brave Bird here, and I'm going to be putting this Arcanine in range of a potential Dark Pulse, even though I think I, uh, or I, High Horsepower is what I meant, because I think Dark Pulse was a roll, and I probably would have clicked Hydro Pump anyway. But he teleports into Dragapult here, gets his uh, threat back in. I'm just going to sack her back because, again, that was my plan all along because it was my least useful member. I'm going to go into Bulu here. I click High Horsepower, expecting him to go into Arcanine. But he does opt to go for the Shadow Ball, and he gets the Special Defense drop. Uh, this may or may not have mattered because, uh, as you'll see, after I get my Grassy Terrain Recovery and my Leftovers, I get back up to 43%, which is, uh, he did 42% on his first Shadow Ball, so it would have been a damage roll if I would have uh, lived this second Shadow Ball or not. But uh, with the special defense drop, he guaranteed killed me. So I'm just going to let this type of Bulu to go, go down now because I can't really uh, afford to go hard into Greninja. And uh, I know that I'm going to be able to go to the Greninja and just click Dark Pulse because I am going to live one Shadow Ball. But uh, I was not going to be able to live two, so I couldn't go hard into it. Uh, Dark Pulse is going to two-hit KO his Arcanine as he's going to sack it just so he could get his Dragapult back in to change in his Choice Lock move. Um, so as we are watching that, I know that he is going to either A, have to click U-Turn, which I think was a damage roll on my Greninja, and where he was going to have to click Draco Meteor probably, which... Uh, you know, Draco Meteor is 90% accurate or whatever. I go for Shadow Sneak, knowing that... Just expecting that I'm not going to live a hit. So I think that um, if he was no bulk, Shadow Sneak was a guaranteed kill. So it kind of depended how much bulk he had uh, if he was going to take this Shadow Sneak, which I figured he probably was going to have a lot of bulk. So I didn't really think it was going to be doing that much damage. So I was kind of just praying for a crit. 
Now, as you can see, it, it really did no damage, so he did have a lot of HP investment, but he goes for the Draco Meteor and misses. So uh, I kind of get through here <laughs> again with the... Uh, Another game that I just win by the skin of my ass. I really probably should have lost that game to Jer. Uh, so, GG Jer. Uh, I should have lost. <laughs> you played uh, very well. You definitely outprepped me and everything. But uh, with that, we are still going to go ahead and keep our undefeated streak alive. Uh, it seems like the, the Pokemon gods are just on our side this season because I've had a lot of very close games to still be undefeated. But with that, we are going to move on into week eight. Again, trying to keep our undefeated streak alive here, and we will see you then.